2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Is with this hardcore reservation. This remains same. This remains same. And now Charlie submits a job. So he requires 600 slots and say that Charlie has a hardcore reservation of 40. If that's the case Charlie will by default get 40 jobs and this guy will get all the remaining slots 20 even though Charlie has 20 slots or 15 slots only to run but he had a hardcore reservation of 40 slots and that's the reason cluster will not check anything like how much he need and how much is left how much I can take back from him or something like that it will not do any calculations and blindly it will give him 40 slots it doesn't mind how much he wants maybe Charlie needs only 10 slots actually but still he has a hardcore reservation and that's the reason it will give him 40 slots and the remaining slots will be given to other guy that is Bob so the remaining 20 slots will be given to Bob and now after some time allies comes into picture and he submits 10 slots or he asks for 10 slots then what happens is again everything will be same he has a hardcore reservation so this guy we cannot change this guy because he is a very tough guy and he has given a hardcore reservation of 40. So the remaining 20 slots available will be distributed between these two guys. 10 and 10 each. So you guys are clear with this? Okay. So let's take one more last scenario. So again, min share, hardcore reservation. Charlie has a reservation of eighty and Bob has a reservation of 40. Let's take this case. In the sense, it is like 2 is to 1 scenario. Monday morning, Bob comes to office and Charlie and allies were not in now Bob submits a job of 300 slots so now what will be the case okay. 
okay let me keep like this only because these are stable things that are not going to be changed right and this will be zero Liz and Charlie zero and how much Bob gets so by default he will get 60 so this is the default case right there, there is nothing going to be changed in this case and now after say Bob has completed to 40 tasks and remaining was 60 Charlie comes to office and submits a job of 600 slots so now tell me what happens this is okay fine it's not going to be changed and Bob needed that was total in 300 it's not going to be changed and now Charlie submitted a new job so this is going to be changed and because he needed 600 slots right now how much Bob gets and how much Charlie gets tell me so totally 60 slots were available and now how many each of them will get if you see they had a hardcore reservation of 2 is to 1 scenario exactly Bob will get 20 and Charlie will get 40 even though they had hardcore reservations what they are happening is two of guys are having the same property and that's the reason they were distributed in this way so everything will happen on ratio basis here if more than one guy has hardcore reservation and now allies comes into picture and say he needed 10 slots so now tell me what happens so this is same this is same this is same allies needed 10 delete home oh I didn't change the name huh? okay Charlie okay no confusions now tell me what happens to each of the guy only 60 slots were available perfect man you're rocking 20 40 and 0 so this is what happens because this guy doesn't have any reservation and only 60 slots were available and these two guys were in less of count if you see or if you observe it these guys are less in count even though they are having a hardcore reservation of more than 20 and 40 but still as the number of slots were less they are getting only this proportion so that's the reason allies is going to get only zero okay so that's how the job scheduling happens okay so is everyone fine this with this or any questions can I go ahead with the next topic good so what is the next one the next one is MR chaining so now these concepts are like whatever the concepts that I am explaining today they are like advanced concepts in MapReduce 
but still actually these were not part of our course but still i want to explain you such that at least you will be get introduced of what is what maybe internally once you come working on each of this or once you get hands on on each of them things might be different but still i just wanted to introduce those things okay so that's the reason i'm covering these topics so often there will be a need of chaining the map reduce job as the whole processing cannot be done in a single map reduce process and this whole procedure is called as map reduce chaining so generally we are writing one mapper job and one reducer job one driver job right that is the default or actual procedure we use it to follow whatever the program we are getting still now we are writing with only single mapper and single reducer but that's not the case every time so sometimes we may be in need like uh, the whole requirement cannot be processed by a single map reduce job with a single and map function and with a single reduce function the whole functionality is not able to be achieved so at that time what we will do is we will write multiple mappers and multiple reducers and we will chain each of them in the driver job so maybe take an example like i want the count of each of the word and at the same time uh, the uh, i mean in the sense same kinds of words needs to be grouped together maybe uh, in my whole line i am getting the finish word in different forms maybe finishing finished finish like that you might be getting so word count along with grouping of words counted as a single word so now for example if you take these words all these might uh, i need that all these should be considered as a one single word only it needs to be counted as one single word only so there will be few cases like these where i cannot achieve the functionality within one map and one reduce program or maybe uh, the requirement might be after some stop words is finished or some stop words get executed the word count needs to be executed like this in some other format i am just telling you an example that this is not actual case but still i am trying to give a sample example okay so what happens here is consider there are four mappers so the whole processing needs can be executed with four mappers and one reducer job so what happens is my map 1 will get executed first and then my map 2 will get executed then and after all these map 1 and map 2 are finished those intermediate values were given to my reducer and my reducer is giving some output and this particular output might be an input to my map 3 job such that it does all this combination of groupings so from my reducer output i am getting each of the word counts and in map 3 what i am doing is i am grouping all these finish words finishing finished and finish all these words i am grouping again and i am giving output as word comma 1 I mean in the sense finish comma 1 i just wanted to give the output even though the output from my reducer is finished comma 1 finish comma 1 or finishing comma 1 so again there is some more functionality after my reducer job so the sequence might be in this form a map 1 map 2 reduce map 3 and map 4 so are you able to understand this or maybe let me write map no. reduce output will be in this form finish comma 1 finished comma 1 and here finishing comma 1 okay and now output of my map 3 should be in this form finish comma 
So all these three need to be treated in one single way and the output should be as finish comma one. So if you take this example, I cannot copy it. Map one, map two, reduce, map three and map four. So this is my my sequences. So if you see here or if you observe all the shuffling and sorting will happen between map two and reduce only. And all the remaining were in sequence. Map one after map one is executed, map two will start. After this is executed, reduce will start. But still the shuffling and sorting will happen in map two and reduce phase only. So these two functions are actually the main important functions. Map two, reduce and maybe map three also because again from reducer map should take the input. So maybe you can consider these three are the main functions. That's it. Right? And this is called as one second, guys. Ah, Udu, 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 Udu. Okay, sorry guys. Okay, so this is called as linear way of execution. So there is some dependency between map 1, map 2, reduce, map 3 and map 4. So once each of the job is finished, then only the second map 2 will, job will get into picture. After map 1 and map 2 is finished, reduce job will come into picture. And there will be one other case called as nonlinear fashion also. So what happens in this case is maybe map one output and map two output both needs to be sent as an input to my reduce. So there is a dependency or there is some kind of dependency on both the jobs map 1 and map 2 maybe map 2 might be some other way as well map 1 after map 1 is finished there will be map 3 job and after map 3 is finished you might your map 2 job might come into picture but even though my map 4 job or some other job is depending on two of the jobs which are not simultaneous so that kind of fashion is called as non-linear fashion so dependency will be there even they are not executed simultaneously for example if this is the sequence you have my map three output might be depending on map one map four and map five jobs some other job is also there but it's not going to be executed in this sequence but still my map three is depending on map one map four and map five jobs so it's not like in linear fashion at that case my map 3 has to wait until all those jobs, all the dependency jobs are going to be executed. So for this nonlinear fashion, I will give the dependency by add depending job function. So it can be like x dot add depending job of y so until all the jobs that were related to y are finished this x job cannot be started so you can add these dependency in this format add depending of job okay and coming to my driver job
driver of each job creates a new job conf so till now if you remember there is only one job configuration object that we were calling in our regular MapReduce programs but here that is not the case each mapper will have its own job configuration so there will be two kinds one is global driver object and second one is local driver object okay so this local driver object is will get the properties of that particular mapper itself so it's like only particular to that mapper but this global driver object will contain the properties which will be applied for all your mappers so if you take the precedence or priority local driver object will take the higher priority when compared to global driver object so uh, whatever the properties that were available on global dri driver will be taken first and uh, later on if any property is not available in this local driver job then only it will go to global driver object so that's what happens and to show you a sample case this is how it happens so first of all I will declare my configuration conf as configuration conf is equal to get conf and job conf job is equal to new job conf so for my particular job conf I am creating a object called as job and I am giving the job name as change job and whatever the input and output formats that I am going to declare and here if you see the input paths and output paths the inputs and outputs will be declared like the output of map 1 will be input of map 2 and output of map 2 will be input to reduce it will be in that kind so if you have this sequence the outputs and inputs will be like map 1 output will be sent as input to map 2 and map 2 output will be sent as input to reducer so those paths should be given properly in this set input paths and output paths of each of the drivers and this line this line is an local map configuration object so here you are creating a map1 conf which is particular to my map1 job okay and here in each of your add mapper you are going to give the job name and whatever the map name you are having and here itself you will be declaring the formats of your keys and values so here my key and values are long writable dot class and text dot class so input key and input value is long writable and text and output key and output value is text comma text and if you observe here there is one more command called as true okay so there is one more point that is coming into picture in the case of map reduce chaining so there might be a case like all these intermediate intermediate values can be accessed passed by value or pass by reference okay there can be two cases here pass by value and pass by reference the default way whatever we had seen till now is pass by value I mean uh, maybe the word count program or maybe the partitioner program or combiner program the default value to access all these intermediate values is pass by value only but here pass by reference will also come into picture so it's like multiple tasks will run in the same JVM because of chaining so there will be only one single JVM under which we are having multiple map tasks running or multiple reduced tasks running so what happens is uh, the output of initial mapper will stay in one place in a single memory and my next map job or reduced job will directly take that memory point as a reference to fetch these intermediate values so pass by reference
will be used in case of MR chaining. Okay. So that's what the case I use it to give here whether it is true or false. So it's a boolean value if I say true it will be taken by pass by reference if it is false it will take by pass by value. So that is how my MR chaining will happen and whatever the mappers you want to add you can add those with cha chain mapper dot add mapper and if you want to add any number of reducers you can add it with chain reducer dot set reducer. Okay and adds a global job line dot runoff job to get the global properties which can be overridden with the individual mapper or reducer job properties right so I told you there will be a uh, local object and as well as a global object so the precedence and priorities will happen like first local and then second global and default job configuration is new job conf of false so all clear okay fine so next the next topic is on joins so we all know about joins right so in SQL or maybe in DB2's the regular relational databases whatever we have right now we use it to use joins very frequently so join is nothing but it's an uh, retrieval of data from more than one table right it's nothing but retrieval of information from more than one table right so the same concept can also be applied in MapReduce but if you take the whole Hadoop ecosystem into picture MapReduce is not the right one or not the right ecosystem to do joins if at all you want to perform some good joins or some good retrieval process pick or hive might be the best one when compared to MapReduce but still the same functionality can be introduced in MapReduce as well or, in the, or maybe the same functionality can be done in MapReduce as well but if you take the case like which one is best in whatever the ecosystems that were available in Hadoop MapReduce is not the first guy okay so in order to perform joins in MapReduce Hadoop has a contrib package called as data join that works as a generic framework for data joining so if at all I want to write any join program then I have to add a library called as org.apache.hadoop.mapred.join and it has to include a jar file a separate jar file which is contained in contrib library uh, let me try to show you that also maybe if you want to do some experiments on that you can just add this library and try to write a program
okay meanwhile this is going to open i will add one more point for your dry map chaining okay so there is one other ecosystem called as uzi okay uzi is a new ecosystem which gives the functionality of of MapReduce chaining okay so we heard about MapReduce chaining right so each job is changed with chained with outputs of those jobs right so my map one output will be input to another map job or something like that so the same functionality is applied in Uzi as well so what Uzi does is like Mm, okay they i am having five jobs scheduled and each job is depending on another job so what uzi does is takes output of first job and gives an input as a second job and so on so forth so it takes again the output of second job and gives as input to the third job and all this uzi functionality is written in xml language only but the only difference between Uzi and this MR chaining is in my MapReduce chaining all the job control and all these jobs will run on client machine whereas in Uzi ecosystem all these process or all this functionality will run as a service on cluster itself so the client will just submit the job and all these workflows definitions will be written on my server itself in XML language and also scheduling is a new advantage in UZ so for example if you want to run a job at particular time maybe at midnight 2 o'clock or something you can just schedule the job and leave for the day from office at that particular point of time these, go these jobs will get triggered and all this flow of jobs will happen simultaneously so that's what one of the advantage of Uzi and there in Uzi if you consider there will be two separate components called as control flow module and action module so there are two different nodes so the first node will define the beginning and ending of a workflow and this particular action node will have the real execution performed in it two nodes in it or maybe two components first one is control flow node which explains or which defines the beginning and ending of my workflow and second one is action node which talks about the actual execution okay so don't worry about this Uzi this is not part of our course but I just wanted to introduce you about this ecosystem as well okay so let's not wait before it starts we will go h2k emphasis provides world-class online IT training staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide h2k emphasis 
how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.